Welcome everyone to the Q4 FY20 earnings call of the Uflex Limited. We thank the man management for giving us the opportunity to host the call. Today we have with us Ms. Senior Management of the company represented by Mr. Rajesh Patia, Group CFO and Mr. Yusuf Nasrullah from Investor Relations. I will now hand over the call to the company management. Over to you, sir. Thank you, uh, Ranjan. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the fourth quarter FY20 earnings call of Uflex Limited. On the call today, as Runjan said, we have a group CFO, Mr. Rajesh Patia. Our discussions may include predictions, estimates, or other information that might be considered forward-looking. While these forward-looking statements represent our current judgment on what the future holds, they are subject to risks and uncertainties that could cause actual results to differ materially. You are cautioned not to place undue reliance on these forward-looking statements, which reflects our opinion only as to of the date of this presentation. Please keep in mind that we are not obligating ourselves to revise the publicly released result of any revision to these forward-looking statements in light of new information of future events. I would also like to emphasize that while this call is often open to all invitees, it may, it may not be broadcasted or reproduced in any form or manner. I would now like to invite Mr. Bhatia to share some perspective with you with regard to the company's operations and results for the quarter under review. After that, we will open to call to questions from analysts. Over to you, sir. Okay. Thank you. And uh, uh, a very good afternoon to all the participants on the call. Uh, let me first give a uh, perspective by uh, saying that you know Uflex is perhaps the one of the companies which is uh, unscathed by uh, the coronavirus and uh, uh, neither in terms of its production. Uh, facilities nor in terms of its market so you know the business has been uh, as usual and rather you know because of the COVID uh, and given that there's a lot of focus on the uh, on on the food and pharma so there is there is actually a buy and see uh, in the in the packaging films as well as the the, the packaging market uh, so Q4, uh, uh, you would have all seen that you know the uh, standal standalone EBITDA for the quarter is up about 20% to about 150 crores, and uh, the consolidated uh, EBITDA for the Q4 is also up by about 6%, little over 6% to about 276 crores. Uh, for FY20 uh, whole whole year, uh, you know the EBITDA is though reported is 616 crore, but that includes one non-recurring uh, income of 77 crores, which was uh, you know uh, uh, which was reflected in the Q3 results. So if we exclude that, so the normalized EBITDA for the uh, standalone EBITDA is up 12% for the uh, for for the whole year, and while the Q4 EBITDA is up 20% uh, on a on a standalone basis, uh, the consolidated EBITDA is up 10% uh, for the year, and that's largely due to the better operating margins in in BOPP films, BOPED films. Uh, and uh, we have we have seen this year in FY20 that the that the value added uh, uh, you know which is largely a sales minus a key major raw material is up by about 35% in India and value add in the uh, BOPET is up about 12%. Similarly, across other BOPET facilities in the uh, at our various plants, so we we've we've seen that you know the margins value add addition margins have been higher from about seven percent to about twenty percent range, 
uh, for the BOPET and uh, uh, for the BOPP overseas, it's about, uh, you know, 12%. So this all translates into uh, though a lower net revenue for FY20, which is down about close to about 7%. Uh, but uh, this is largely because of the crude price impact and not otherwise. Two factors, actually. Uh, the crude price impact as well as the impact of the, uh, uh, you know, uh, shifting of a of a Dubai plant, where we approximately we lost about 300 350 crore of the top line because of that, and the average crude prices in FY20 fell by about almost 13 percent, uh, which is uh, uh, which means that um, you know given that about 60 percent of the key raw material cost is uh, selling price. Uh, of the selling price, so that numbers uh, that explains actually, you know, the, how the crude prices have affected, uh, you know, sort of the net revenue. Having said that, because the margins, EBITDA margins, are better over uh, lower uh, revenue also, so we we've seen EBITDA margins for the year as a whole. Uh, improved uh, on a consolidated basis from about 12.6% uh, in FY19 to 14.9% uh, in FY20. Uh, even the standalone beta margins are uh, uh, reflect, uh, you know, uh, a much better number. So overall, uh, for the for the for the year, if we see FY20. Uh, the consolidated PAT is up by 18% to 370 crores, and the standalone PAT uh, for FY20 is up 175% to 143 crores. Of course, this all includes, uh, you know, uh, recurring one time also, which uh, for which still you will pay tax, and the Q4 consolidated PAT is up almost 44% on a year-on-year -year basis, uh, and uh, Q4 standalone PAT is up about 93%, uh, which, uh, which is a normalized uh, sort of a PAT, so then it, it does not have any, uh, any one-time recurrence uh, and all that. So overall, uh, you know, uh, a reasonably good performance given the backdrop of the COVID and which particularly the way we did in India, you know, we, uh, we, we actually closed everything and then, uh, you know, but fortunately for us because we were part of the essential, so we were given uh, timely permissions to keep on operating uh, our facilities. And overseas, of course, because there was, there was no, uh, you know, the, the the lockdown wasn't as comprehensive as, as it was in India. So all the facilities continued to operate, uh, albeit with some, uh, uh, you know, uh, some restrictions. But, you know, nevertheless, the, uh, the situation was, uh, very much uh, manageable. Yes, that meant that you know we had some ad uh, additional administrative and logistics challenges, uh, which we handled more so in India, where you know everything was stopped, and then when you are told that you are essential, so uh, you know you have the last mile problems because you know how do you, how does the truck driver will reach the truck? If, if he will drive, he will be. Uh, call uh, he he'll be uh, held up at the uh, you know various barriers and then he might be hauled up so so there was there was a bit of a confusion to begin with but you know uh, all of this settled down well on a production and sales number for FY20 uh, while I say that you know the overall production growth is reflected as minus 3.7 percent uh, so films. Uh, and the packaging, packaging, uh, you know, for a for a FY20 overall, there's a, there's a uh, more than five percent uh, growth in the production level, 
And But, you know, if we negate the impact of that plant shift to Dubai, actually the volume growth uh, is, is not... Uh, is not even negative in in the films. Overall, it will be still plus by about two and a half percent. Similarly, for Q4 also, while the overall production growth uh, on a year-on-year basis is uh, minus 2.6 percent, but uh, you know, uh, negating the impact of the uh, plant shift is uh, you know the overall growth will be about five percent or uh, or so. Uh, packaging production growth of 10 point near about 11 percent in Q4 is is highly encouraging, and while the overall packaging volume growth for FY20 is about uh, five and a half percent, the packaging sales growth in Q4 is 6.4 percent, and that's mainly because though the production growth is 10.8 percent, but the packaging Sales growth is 6.4% because, you know, towards the end of March when, you know, everything stopped, so the supply chain became a bit of an issue. Otherwise, uh, you know, the packaging sales growth also for the year would have been a higher number uh, than than this. Uh, On the aseptic packaging, yes, we had a uh, Q4 volume growth of about 150% uh, on a year-on-year basis. And uh, if we talk about uh, FY21 summer season, uh, definitely we would have had the optimum capacity utilization from the plant given our order book. Uh, But unfortunately, that was the only area which was uh, impacted by COVID as the juices and the liquor sales got impacted because of the lockdown but uh, otherwise we were on course to achieve almost uh, uh, full capacity utilization uh, you know sort of uh, from uh, this plant uh, that is you know on the financials as well as on the production and sales I can only say that, you know, during the current quarter also, uh, you know, the demand continues to be robust both for the packaging films as well as for the packaging, uh, uh, as well as for the packaging. And uh, this quarter, definitely we will see uh, much better volumes uh, both on the packaging film as well as the packaging uh, in the packaging side. As you know, the uh, and you know, a better improved margins also because uh, you know what has happened is when India closed down, uh, there was uh, uh, the the other rest of the uh, countries were still operating, so there was uh, actually no supply, no exports were being made from India. So while all the overseas territories were operating, so there was an additional requirement what was otherwise being met from India. So that uh, additional volumes came our way. Those uh, that also uh, helped us to uh, improve our prices to pass on the costs of the additional logistics and the transportation costs to the customers. Uh, But yes, you know, uh, the, 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 there was a margin expansion also, which has been observed in the in the current quarter itself. So, you know, the uh, the effect of the BOPED on the demand for the packaging films and the packaging continues to be witnessed in the current uh, physical in the Q1, and uh, uh, you know, we we expecting. Uh, a very good performance, uh, you know, uh, by Uflex for the Q1, both for India as well as our overseas uh, business. Uh, on the debt side, this year there has been a substantial uh, reduction as well as addition. So during this year, we uh, paid about, uh, uh, repaid about. Uh, almost about 400 crores of uh, debt, both for India and overseas. A large part of that repayment was done in India, where we uh, repaid more than about 260 crores of uh, of our debt. And given that there is no new projects in India, so there was hardly any 
uh, addition uh, of uh, any any debts uh, uh, overall uh, because we are we are expanding in uh, in some of the forest in foreign jurisdictions so additional debts have been taken to uh, you know fund those acquisitions happy to inform that uh, our plant uh, shift from dubai to russia is will get commissioned in the current quarter uh, yes we have uh, some uh, you know uh, trial runs going on uh, in the in the previous quarter in the up to june quarter but um, you know still uh, we are uh stabilizing uh, that facility and uh, but you know definitely we will see the volumes coming from that plant uh in the in the current fiscal uh, uh a part of that will also come in the june quarter and then you know we expect that in next one month or so we should be uh, finally be able to commission that plant fully and then you know our whatever uh revenues and the uh, uh, you know and the uh, uh, quantitative numbers we lost out last year i think we we'll, we'll make up for that uh, all other facilities are also at an very advanced stage so we we advanced a few projects uh, like in poland and all and uh, i think uh, there'll be some delays uh in in finally the commissioning of these projects uh, a couple of months uh but overall um, you know within the current financial year uh we will have all the facilities uh, you know sort of uh, up and running which will uh, and given that the markets are uh, robust now and also because of this covid uh the customers are now looking at more of a localized solutions rather than depending on imports so i think all these situations will help us to achieve better uh, realization and better uh, you know uh, volumes in the local markets where we are whether in egypt poland uh, russia dubai and uh, you know uh there'll be less and less uh, uh, you know people all the businesses would like to uh, lower their risk of uh, importing so let's say us importing from india or europe importing from from india so that way uh, you know uh, our markets where we are we will be sure that we will see definite uh, uh, better volumes as well as the profitability in those markets in the in the coming coming year uh aseptic packaging yes i said that you know the current financial year summer of 2021 we would have seen uh the optimum capacity utilization from the plant uh so i think we will uh, we be trying to see as to what best we can we can do uh but you know let's all be clear that you know uh, there there are two very good seasons one is the summer where you know people uh, are drink a lot of uh, you know drinks on the go while they are traveling or you know because of the heat and all that uh and then you know you have the liquor in in the uh which generally goes throughout the year but you know in the winter's time it is uh, it is consumed more so obviously uh, the summer is now gone and you know we can't recoup those volumes uh but the uh, what the idea of telling you all this is that you know uh, uh in the aseptic business as uh, you know there there were always uh, uh questions about as to what are we doing about that how will we ramp up the numbers over there so just wanted to give uh uh you know uh news that uh yes uh, in the septic packaging also we are uh, we have uh, achieved uh, full capacity utilization for this summer which unfortunately could not be achieved so uh, uh, hopefully you know in the in the winters will be much better and uh, in the in the summer of 2021 i think uh, we will uh, uh, 
uh, you know, sort of uh, go ahead and, uh, you know, even order our next line to double up, up our capacity uh, over there. So uh, that's basically uh, sums up our performance for this quarter. Uh, you know, uh, extremely, extremely satisfying performance on, on every front, whether it is, uh, you know, the volumes, whether it is the cost reductions, or whether it is, uh, you know, uh, uh, completion of some of our uh, projects, which we will see happening in the in the current financial year. So, with that, I I sum up my uh, you know narration to you in terms of how's been the Q4 and uh, how we have performed uh, in the financial year 2020. And uh, uh, I'm I'm open to any uh, questions that uh, the participants may have. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on your touched on telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. To ask a question, please press star 1. We have a first question from the line of Chirag Singhal from First Water Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for taking my question. First of all, congrats on a good set of numbers, sir. Uh, just a couple of questions. First, uh, can you give separately the tentative startup months for Hungary, Nigeria, and Poland? I think uh, we will see. Uh, so I think we will uh, see uh, Russia and Poland now happening in this quarter, and uh, uh, others in the in the Q3. Okay. Okay. And uh, is there any residue capex left for these three projects? So uh, I think most of the residue projects, yes, there'll be some some things left. Only then we are talking about that you know they're getting completed in the Q3. So how much uh, will that be? Uh, I think should be close to about uh, fifty million dollars. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, and then the next question is on the uh, flexible packaging. Uh, we saw good growth, especially in the Q4 in this segment. So what kind of volume growth you are expecting in the FY21? And we also saw, which you also highlighted in the opening commentary, that the margins expansion which happened in the Indian business was quite good. So what kind of margins are you expecting uh, for FY21 as well? So I think overall, if we see, uh, you know, what we have achieved in FYQ4, a margin of about, a beta margin of about 15.5% uh, uh, on a standalone and about 15.6% uh, at, at a consolidated level. I think Q1 for, of the current financial year for sure will have a margin expansion. Uh, how sustainable is that because of the COVID? Is that what we will have to see? Uh, but let's not forget that you know uh, the both the BOPET and the, as as I said that you know if we see uh, the BOPET margins increase actually by about 12% even in the FY20 and BOPP margins by about 35% in the in the current financial year. So I think it's important that as to uh, what we achieved in FY20, uh, you know, we we sort of uh, somehow maintain those. Q1 definitely is going to be better than that, but uh, Q2 uh, onwards, uh, I think we will we will have to see overall blended for the year. If we can still achieve 16% uh, margins, I think uh, we'll be will be good. Okay, and on the volume front, sir, for the flexible packaging. Uh, we we should expect about seven to eight percent growth in the current financial year. Okay. On the flexible packaging. Okay. And so on the aseptic, you mentioned quite a growth in the Q4. Is it possible to give the capacity utilization and revenues in quarter four and for FY? Yeah, I think I think we we will. Uh, 
uh, we'll uh, have issues in sort of uh, giving that because of the competitions. Uh, all that I can I can say is that you know uh, we we are very close to achieving the full capacity utilization of that plant. So that okay. that should give you uh, enough. Uh, this thing that you know we 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 were actually on course to uh, do uh, almost at uh, at more than 95 percent capacity utilization during the summer period. In Q4, by the end of Q4. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, in the in the uh, so starting from March to uh, uh, March, April, May, June, July. So these are the you know largely the summer months in which you know the consumption is 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 quite high. Okay, so you mentioned that as we would have lost majority of our summer sales due to the lockdown and all. So. Uh, liquor, what, what, how much does that constitute to our uh, overall aseptic order book or overall aseptic sales? So liquor, as of now, we contribute a significant amount, and then number two is juice. I would say uh, liquor would be about 60%, and juice would be about 40%. Uh, and liquor definitely got affected because, you know, all the factories were closed, and even after that uh, you know there there was a kind of a situation where uh, you know for for a large period of time when the uh, you know the liquor shops didn't open and all that and normally you know the liquor goes more with when you are uh, when you outside uh, home though those things will also change but yes liquor sales uh, does get affected because of uh, the covid hugely Okay, so as you said that we were almost near to our optimum capacity utilization, we would have made plans to start the second line as well? So we were planning to order second line somewhere in uh, in the month of, uh, in the Q3. So, you know, the, by the time we would have reached Q3, we would have pretty much known as to, you know, uh, while you are doing a peaking out in the summer months, as to how does the uh, the rains as well as the period after the rains, uh, you know, how do you perform in that? And then depending on that, we should have, uh, you know, really looked at uh, ordering another uh, uh, line printing uh, in Q3. And uh, so let's see as to, there will be some delay therein. We have not still yet decided as to, um, you know, how, how do we do that? Uh, when do we do that? But uh, surely that that is on, on the cards to happen. Okay. One last question from my side, sir. Uh, the equipment suppliers credit is that included in the borrowings, which are uh, so this borrowings, or is it separately shown? If yes, then how much will it be? There's no equipment supplier credit. It's all that uh, you know. Whatever are the loans we have drawn, and whatever. Uh, is all included in the boring. There's nothing else which is which is part of uh, outside of this. Okay, okay, okay. So you said the incremental capex will be around 50 million dollars for the uh, upcoming expansion. So will we'll uh, see a further surge in borings or? Yeah, yeah. There'll be there'll be some additional borings during the current fiscal. Uh, I think we still remain to uh, draw about 50, 60 millions of. Uh, existing facilities uh, which we got approved for our, for our projects in the coming in the coming financial year okay, okay. In, in the current fiscal all right okay all right so that's it from my side thanks a lot thank you we have next question from the line of om agarwal from balaji investments please go ahead good morning sir Mm -hmm. uh, so we are looking to the financial reasons why the borrowing cost, the interest cost, financial cost not getting reduced in spite of good cash flow. No, it is it is getting reduced as the loans are getting. Uh, okay. Last year, last year's finance cost is 218 crores of loan, roughly, and the okay. this year is around 225 crores. Okay, so you, you have to. Uh, uh, and the turnover also, is also reduced. Turnover is also revenue is uh, revenue is also reduced. No, no. So, so the last year, while the loans were drawn because the projects were underway, uh, some of uh, the interest costs would have got capitalized also. 
so but now everything comes to hit the uh, pnl only so that effect uh, will always be there no yes matlab last year some so actually some last year capitalized ha huh, last, last year would have got capitalized so you would not see that in pnl but the total interest outgo last year versus total interest go uh, would would be more than the current year since the rate of interest is also going down yeah and the cash flow starting it to the the finance cost must get reduced projects so there there is certain project cost which it does not hit the profit and loss account so is it i mean the expansion uh, new projects which are getting commission like that so last year we had uh, some projects which were getting still commissioned mm -hmm. uh, and that is why a uh, cost of those borrowings would have got capitalized while they come to uh, uh, in the profit and loss account in the current year mm -hmm. So do you have any further questions this cash flow this interest rate must interest cost should go substantially nahi usme you know while you are seeing that the gsec is going down and all that but you know please appreciate that uh, we are borrowing from the banks and uh, while rbi has been reducing the interest rates but those being passed on by the banks to the clients is not that seamless and the cash banks flow. have been but passing but on the very quickly the good cash flow as well no but the company has a good around 7 to 800 cash flow is there so with that cash this this cash flow the dividend is also not high the dividend payout is also not much high so with this cash flow retained cash flow interest finance cost must go substantially down i mean so as i said that last year approximately about 400 crores is what we have uh, paid repaid yes so we had an abita of 1100 crores then we had taxes uh, 400 crores of this plus some additional normal capex which we keep on doing the year so uh, the entire cash flow is is definitely there but you know you understand the concept the of mcl the investors and the fresh yeah. investment should be there no so one year mclr when you know your bank has fixed that let's say in the no month of november so till the next november month that that will continue so any change in the mclr will come to hit you only oh, yes. after the end after of the, the one year after after that time that period but while we see in the news that you know it is it is it is it happening will, instantly yes, yeah it is not coming into effect yeah okay okay thank you huh? thank you thank you sir we have next question from the line of faber bajatia from hni investment so i'm sorry to interrupt this there's a lot of disturbance coming from your line could you please use your handset and now yeah yes this is fine just go ahead yeah sure so uh, i mean you you have indicated that that there will be uh, a bit of a uh, you know margin statements that that is there uh, in the current quarter which is june ending quarter so is, uh, so is it more uh, more coming from bopp or uh, bopet from which uh, segment you, you are seeing is a are a uh, very high. we are a very large uh, uh, bopet player but we are very small in the bopp segment category uh, while there'll be expansion in both the things but you know the impactful more impactful for us is bopet and as i said that you know the russia trial runs have started the uh and we we seeing that you know the uh, uh, you know uh, in the current quarter we will have russia as well as poland getting commission so so from that perspective the volumes will uh, will be will be much higher uh, both in the current quarter as well as in the q2 of the current financial year so uh, but as the uh, our volumes on the bopet side are higher so obviously you know that makes more impact to us hmm 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 
yeah but if, if you leave the mix aside are you seeing that bopet uh, improvement in bopet margin is much more than bopp margin or no, or it is vice versa like it's not like that see bopet as i said that you know fy 19 was a time when bopet hit almost the uh, very low and that is where when i said in fy 20 in the bopet margins we've seen a, seven, a 35% kind of a growth uh while in the bopet we've seen a 12% uh, growth uh, in in fy20 so i think now more or less uh, you know the bopet uh, which was lagging behind because of some of the excess capacities which got installed is now mm-hmm. finding its feet back to be at a normal curve mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. got it uh, so that that's for the uh, the upcoming quarter but from a uh, relatively longer term perspective i'm sure you know it is very hard to uh, project demand in this environment mm. but on the supply side are you seeing any significant disruption due to covid either in indian plants or global plants due to due to covid which can significantly derail the uh, supply side uh, of either B- or no. bopp or bopet not at all not at all not at all see again what depends is that you know how uh, how much in, uh, in uh, initiative you have like you know mm. when because of the covid uh, you know people close their plants and mm. uh, while you know uh, we kept on working uh so everybody everybody in the country you know uh, uh closed their plants because you know people could not travel to plant people could not travel to offices because you know the the person uh, on the local uh, uh you know checkpoint does not know as to what does it mean but i think we worked over time our team worked over time to get the necessary permissions to get the passes issued and all that so with the result that i think our overall facilities were only closed for a couple of days only and also that also because of the fact that you know there was no transportation movement happening and so even if we produce and even if the local markets are uh, local customers are not buying because they are closed so we had a huge opportunity to export that stuff also if we are operating while we did all that but you know there was some moment at which you know simply you keep on producing and it's not getting dispatched so the dispatch situation took a few days to settle but you know largely during all this period so except for a couple of days in the month of march uh, when you know the we we stopped the, the things otherwise we been uh producing uh, at the at the at the maximum capacity at all our plants and you will see those numbers in the current quarter when we will present those numbers i'll try to see that you know to the stock exchanges we can announce up to june quarter uh production and the dispatch volumes uh, you know as soon as possible so that will give more uh, you know sort of insight to the investors as to what are the kind of growth we are talking about Yeah. Actually, I was I was coming from a relatively longer term perspective on the installation of new capacities, mm-hmm. uh, which can probably you know uh, uh, which can probably allow us to have higher margin for a longer term uh, rather than just one or two quarters. So, we, are you seeing any disruption in new capacities coming up due to COVID? That's what I wanted to understand. New capacities coming up due to COVID. no i think any disruption in the any disruption in the new capacities uh, uh like you know if some somebody uh, somebody is not uh, able to uh, commission his plant in a timely manner then that can create a uh, supply side disruption which can last for 6 months or a year or something like that okay okay from that perspective you're saying so yeah. that obviously yeah. will will happen that obviously will happen uh that you know whosoever is setting up new facilities and if the movement of the people is uh, impacted like you know our some of our plants also got a bit delayed only because of the fact that you know the technicians who have to come and install those machines they could not travel mm. so mm. those kind of a situations will keep on happening and you know in certain situations we even uh, did the commissioning through uh, uh uh on on the video phones also 
so we installed okay. cameras and all that and you know some of the people some of their technical stuff were guiding from there and that's where you know we could uh, uh, we could commission especially in russia where we were uh, you know sort of uh, uh, really the team really did a great job in ensuring that you know they they start with the trial runs and all that hmm 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 got it yeah uh, yeah that's it for my side thank you thank you so we have next question from the line of dirk skama from olb bank please go ahead yes thank you very much hello mr batya hi um very great performance we we really like it uh, i just have one question as you were elaborating on the um, <clears throat> supply chain so that you had also uh, outlined that some of your customers seems to now uh, buying more locally than depending on imports um, as uflex is a, is is a global company and is uh, uh, exporting on a global scale could this kind of behavior saying that some of your customers are looking more for purchasing uh locally to avoid imports could that be in the long run uh maybe lead also to the to a decision that uflex might um expand in some other regions of the world where you are not present at the moment so uh i think uh, the localization will de- is definite play now given a covid situation and the uh, associated uh, you know the supply chain disruptions which have happened uh you know the customers are preferring to buy local even if it is a bit expensive because they don't want to be out of stocks and you know normally for a country like us if you want to import from india you have to plan 3 months in advance uh for europe it will be lesser than that but you know that's the kind of uh, uh you know sort of uh, time frame you have to set so the customer also needs to stock more uh but you know if you are present locally you buying locally then you know you can order your uh, you can just keep a days or two days stock and you can keep on buying uh, locally which is not possible in case of for distant uh, imports so uh you know yes they, they, they that will uh, give us a huge benefit but are we planning any additional capacity set up because of that i think it's too early to say at this moment uh i think the endeavor as of now will be to commission the existing plants which we have uh, already uh, under execution uh run them and then plan uh, depending on the situation not to hurry up into anything just like you know because of the covid now if we set up a line in in the other jurisdictions where we are and the localization is the game uh, i i don't think so we we going to do that uh, okay anytime soon thank you that thank you so much for that thank you thank you we have next question from the line of pohit agarwal from india b capital please go ahead Uh, hi sir uh, hi. uh so uh, just the first question on uh, ss2 you said that uh, summer season is you were uh, you're hoping for 100% utilization never happened because of covid uh, and obviously uh, i mean you're trying to say that there is a seasonality factor which which will be there in ss2 uh, in the winters the sales will not be that much as summer so can you give a like a, some kind of an indication of if if you have a, if you were expecting 100% utilization summers what would be the utilization uh, level in let's say in about 70 70 to 80% okay okay and and you also said that your 60% is alcohol right yeah that's correct because that's yeah, but that may change because uh, that that there. might so that might change actually you know because uh, uh as of now yes to begin with we had more of uh, uh liquor customers uh, and less of a uh, juice and the dairy customers but you know those profiles will keep on changing so that's a current profiling uh but definitely uh, you know the summer time the juice will always be a bigger market than the liquor okay okay uh you have to so russia and uh, poland is coming on stream uh, hopefully uh, this quarter yeah. and uh, then you also have nigeria 
and then we also have uh, ASEPTO, which was obviously uh, unfortunately underutilized. So together, uh, all your, uh, you know, uh, uh, I mean, plan capex, which are coming on stream this fiscal plus ASEPTO, I mean, how much revenue addition you see? Like, I know it's a it's a number dynamic number. It's has a relation to the crude oil price also. But let's say crude oil at fifty sixty dollars. How much revenue you think all these facilities? I mean, the new ones together they should contribute. Oh, difficult question. And you know, you would so so each plant should uh, actually produce about four thousand tons a month. And if the price is two dollars, then is about eight million dollars a month to so about hundred million dollars, which could give you a, uh, let's say a fifteen percent beta margin, and uh, uh, on a on a on a relatively reasonable capacity utilization level, each plant. Right. Right. I mean, yeah, I mean, exactly. I was asking this question. I just wanted to understand what's the EBITDA contribution we can expect. Obviously, when these uh, facilities. So each plant contribute. between 15 and 20 million dollars. 15 to 20 million. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I know uh, some questions have been asked, and that you gave us some clarifications on the debt as of now. Uh, uh, but uh, can you give us exactly uh, what's the long term debt? Right now in India and uh, in in outside India, and you said about uh, 50, 60 million dollars is uh, the capex still remaining. Mm -hmm. So, so what what is the peak long term debt level we are talking about here? Sir? So currently we have a debt of last year we had about 960 crores of a long term debt in India. So we paid about 260 crores uh, last year. We added about 29 crores, and the net is about 725 crores in India now. Offshore, we paid about uh, about 18 million dollars uh, last year, and uh, we have added about two uh, 220 million dollars. We we added for for these projects. Okay, so okay, I got it. I got it. Uh, uh, I mean, I know this question has been asked. Uh, I mean, the previous uh, participant he asked you this question on the free cash flow, how the company is utilizing the free cash flow. Uh, I mean, uh, you said at the starting of your when you were addressing us that you know it's been a very satisfying quarter for you. I mean, it's actually Uplex has been doing pretty well in the last uh, four or eight quarters. Uh, it's been a decent performance. Uh, company is making a, a decent amount of cash, free cash flows, uh, but it's not been a very satisfying journey for the investors, right? Uh, uh, we, uh, I mean, people who have put the money where the mouth is, uh, they haven't been rewarded. My question to you, sir, is that can the company utilize part of this cash flow to buy back? Uh, because, I mean, uh, I mean, at this valuation, even Pure play commoditized, uh, you know, film companies like Jinder, Cosmo, even they are uh, at a premium valuation. So I'm not saying, you know, you go buy, go, go, go out in the market and you buy back like four, five hundred crores worth of stock. But the market cap of Uplex is like 15, 1600 crores right now. I mean, you do more capex than the market cap of the company in a year. Mm. So all I'm saying is that can we go out and do like a hundred, 200 crores kind of a buyback because that's easily the company can fund with its uh, yearly cash flow. And if people want to participate, they can participate. Promoters can mm. keep their shares. Whoever mm. wants to be with the company can keep their shares. Mm. And that itself will be a very good way of rewarding uh, the shareholders. Mm. And I mean, that's one way of company indicating that their interest is also aligned with the investors. Mm. See, currently, as we have the expansions going on, so it's difficult to say, but I think once we complete those, definitely it's a thought worth considering that, uh, you know, you should uh, look at some kind of a buyback to give, uh, uh, to give a, uh, a much better uh, return to the shareholders. Definitely uh, uh, an idea which... Uh, which I think I can take to the board and say that, you know, this is what 
the investors on the call uh, wanted us to explore so definitely yes, and 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 uh, yeah and just to add to your point sir uh, as i mentioned earlier also i mean we see uplex more like a packaging company now and yeah. and correct me if i'm wrong uh, we have 50% we're moving at least towards uh, a, a future where 50% of the revenue coming from packaging not just uh, packaging film so uh, uh, i mean the packaging companies are uh, definitely having a much higher uh, valuation multiples compared to just commoditized film making yeah. and uh, but uh, rather it's the other way right now you be cheaper than just the commoditized packaging companies i mean uh, film making companies so uh, because the dichotomy is just you know increasing so you know uh, uh, just made more sense right so no so we may also consider at an appropriate time segregating the two businesses and uh, giving uh, shareholders the share of both the companies uh, so i think that could be another uh, a way to uh, in, uh, increase the shareholders uh, wealth that you have a separate company who's doing the packaging films and a separate company who's doing packaging right yeah uh, so yeah thank you sir okay thank you sir we have next question from the line of sunny gosar from mk ventures please go ahead uh, thanks for taking my question uh, and congratulations sir on a very good set of numbers uh, sir i just want to uh, taking forward the last uh, participants question in terms of uh, peak debt what could we see the peak level debt uh say from 3700 crores of gross debt uh, currently so i think what we can easily do is march 21 would be you know sort of the peak debt so to the current debt we can add say about 40 million dollars or so more because there will be some repayments also which will happen in the current financial year mm -hmm. uh, so we can add about 40 million dollars right Uh, sir so just i was uh, calculating this broadly uh, assuming that uh, we see even about 15 to 20% uh, growth on the ebitda considering some uh, growth in the underlying business plus the new expansion so the company as a whole can easily do say 1200 to 1250 crores of ebitda mm -hmm. and uh, say we have a interest payout of about uh, 300 to 350 crores uh and some tax we are adding overseas debt so there the interest costs are are you know sort of uh, much much less sure so even if you see our financials so if you see the the indian balance sheet i think while we have debt interest of about uh, uh 170 crore i saw the overall is 225 crore so the overseas debt uh interest portions are really very small because you borrowing at a very competitive uh, you know sort of terms over over there sure sure uh, and assuming some working capital and say about 350 crores of capex uh, uh, don't you think that we'll be basically free cash flow positive uh, and rather than debt going up we can see some kind of uh, debt repayment as well because uh, uh capex you said was only pending capex is only say about 3 uh, 50 million dollars which is say about 350 crores mm. uh so can can we see the debt number actually say coming down from that 3700 crore if you have more cash flow so there are only two ways either you the three ways you go return the to the shareholders you reduce prepay your debt or the third is that you know you uh you plan for uh, um you know your next round of expansion and all that so i think very difficult to say at this stage what will happen but uh, my uh, what i'm suggesting is let's look at as to how these facilities what we currently set up come up stabilize and what numbers they contribute and that's a better time to you know sort of look at this we are aware of that you know in in, in this uh, corporate world there are only three ways that you know you can you can use excess cash what you earnings you can either reinvest into the business or you can reduce the reduce the debt what you have but actually speaking reducing the debt won't help much because a very large as you said india over, total debt is only about 700 odd crores the term debt 
so you know that gets repaid each year is about 150 160 crore so that's a steady thing which which keeps on uh, happening the overseas debt is actually at a very competitive uh, uh, cost and that is why even though the ebitda margins in the overseas business may be lesser but the financial risk is much less because the debt cost is uh, is 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 very very uh, less so even if let's say you make a uh, uh, two or three percent lower beta margins but your interest savings after that while it's a, so we we all look at so used to look at only the beta margins as a, as a, as a reflective of uh, you know sort of a profitability but the interest is also a cost to the business so if i do something in india and that has a much higher risk element because of the higher rate of interest uh, when the businesses uh, you know undergo their periodical um, you know uh, cycle and all that so uh, yes all the three options will be we will consider at an appropriate say sunny so sure. answer one last question in terms of uh, uh, as and when the new facilities get capitalized uh, how much do you see the depreciation uh, for the full year going up from 400 crore levels what, what should uh, we take as a fy20 so see a normal facility will cost you about more or less about 80 million dollars so 5% of that is about 4 4 million from each facility so, so about 100 approximately 100, 100 million yeah, yeah about 100, 100 million. million yeah okay got it got it thanks thanks for thank you so we have next question from the line of runjun jain from nirmal bang please go ahead and please go and ask your question we can't hear you yeah hello, hello. can you hear me yeah gunjan yeah uh, sir, uh, what is the capex we have provided for FI21? You said the 50 million uh, is the remaining for those uh, remaining capex. Cap and uh, another is uh, the your maintenance capex around 150 crores or so. If I'm not sure. 100 crores. 100 crores. Okay. Mm -hmm. And one last thing, sir. Any? You are saying that we are we are likely to see volume better than this last this year. Can you provide any guidance or any uh, direction for that? Mm, for what? For volume, sir. So as I said that, you know, in the packaging business, we expect a 7 to 8% volume growth in the current fiscal. On the, on the um, you know, the flex, on the packaging films, the number will actually depend on because the existing capacities, as I've been saying always, are more or less, you know, sort of fully utilized. So there the deviation possible is only 1 or 2%. Uh, normally, because of the Dubai facility closing down, we've been uh, the you know the average volume per annum what we have would have lost is about 30,000 tons. So one is that will come back, and then um, you know some uh, other facilities getting commissioned. Uh, let's say even if a part of the year. Uh, would would also see, but you know as, at this point in time difficult to you know sort of uh, put a uh, real number to that so dubai will uh, you know the russia will definitely make up for what we lost in dubai in the in fy20 is about 2500 tons uh, is the is the peak uh, that we we can achieve in that plant and uh, uh, i think uh, we can also achieve about uh, 4000 tons in or let's say 3000 tons to begin with in uh, poland uh, in in q3 in q2 uh, so overall for the year we can expect addition in how much incremental uh, sales uh, volume sir? i think that that will depend on other projects being commissioned as of now i have visibility of these two Okay. Uh, and the others, when they come in Q3, we we will really have to look at uh, you know at that point in time as to whether we get a part of Q3 or we also only get a part of Q4 only. And what would be your idea on the uh, sustainability of the current profit margins or the BAPP margins? Though you see is very small part of ours, but BAPP, uh, you think it's just find us sustainable, or you think that 
with the new facilities coming up uh, overseas, uh, you can expect some, uh, you know, moderation in those margins. No, there there can be some impact uh, uh, on the margins, and uh, you know, ultimately, whatever we do has to be, you know, sort of sustainable. And when we set up those facilities, we had this thing in the mind that you know, yes. over the many years we had uh, you know sort of so if you ask me about my existing business uh, overseas uh, what is what is the debt we have currently we we hardly have any debt over there the only uh, long term debt outstanding in our in our offshore business maybe under 20 dollars uh, 20 million dollars only or so uh, but uh, uh, i think uh margins now with the covid and now with the uh, you know a lot of uh, businesses want uh, local supplies probably will not get affected to that uh, to that extent and also what's happening is that you know now like unlike in 2010 11 when the prices went through roof uh you know it is still not uh, uh you know that kind of a euphoria in the business so let's say if i'm if if there are there's 80 million dollars of investment and the annualized ebitda that you make is about uh is about 15 million dollars so payback is five and a half years or so which is a kind of a which is a kind of a uh, you know uh very normal there's nothing to feel uh you know that you know the payback is 3 years or so and uh, uh, so i don't really think so that uh, you know there'll be a huge impact given that now people want to buy uh, locally uh and you know whenever we do this as i said 2011 when the prices of the films jumped uh to a level where the payback was 2 years and then a lot of capacity came together at a point in time which resulted in the much lower prices so those things are not uh, happening so now whatever is the addition because the payback is always between 5 to 6 years it's a well thought out and uh, decision rather than a decision where people say that you know there there are super normal profits to be made so let let's get as early as possible to the production and you know get the things going so uh, i i really yes there might be some impact but uh, will not be to the extent and even if it is there i think there will be it will be short lived only maybe about a year or so by the time uh, you know the things really get settled with the additional volumes that will really help you and one last suggestion if i can make uh, you know as the earlier one of the participants said that uh, we uh, we is you know a better blended or uh, backward integrated company having films on our own and supplying packaging on the front end uh, we have seen many companies uh, on the front end uh, getting higher the uh, multiples and probably uh, you know we are getting a, not getting uh, uh, there in that in those levels in terms of valuation it would be really helpful if we can start looking at differentiating and giving separately the volumes of both the businesses i think that would give you more much more clarity for the for the investors also to value the company on both different parameters see the uh, the moment you start doing that people want separate uh, profitability people want separate numbers and all that and you know if if you say today also i would say that you know if we do uh, annualize volumes uh, of about 400000 tons so largely it is the films only packaging we do about uh, you know sort of uh, uh, about uh, 20% of this is packaging and uh, you know about 80% of this is still in the in, in the films category our business is so uh, you know uh, i think uh, numbers when you when you start giving them separately and all that you know it only uh, adds to more uh, you know sort of some of the information which uh, you know uh, at some point in time you we, you just want to be a bit uh, because of the competition you just want to be a bit uh, uh, 
you know cautious also as to how much you should part with and how much you should not i think generally we have been extremely extremely transparent in terms of giving i have not seen any company in the packaging space giving their volume numbers etc and all that even though when they are a pure packaging play companies uh, packaging films play companies i have uh, i've frankly not seen uh but uh, we are giving sales numbers we giving production numbers we are giving uh, all other information whatever we can give over the uh, over the call and all that so uh, let's see uh, i think i'll keep this in mind and see if we can share the separate number so thank you so much sir thank you very much ma'am Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Yusuf Nasrullah, Investor Relations, Uflex Limited, for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today, and we look forward to staying in touch in future quarters. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen.